Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, He's thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On this uh, fifth Sunday of Easter, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So how is your fruit bearing uh, going these days? Today we're going to spend some time in in the Gospel of John in chapter 15, a familiar passage, a very well-loved passage. And Jesus begins the chapter that we just heard in verse 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Verse 2, every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. So we hear in this passage that there's going to be some cut. <laughs> there's going to be some pruning in our lives. It may be, uh, kind of picture a big, <laughs> big set of shears and with a lop <laughs> of a branch in our life. It may be a smaller kind of a handheld pruner device that, that we cut um, in our own lives as we're working out in the garden and kind of picture the Lord doing that in our life, the vine dresser uh, even if we're bearing fruit, because that pruning process, what does that do? It even allows more fruit uh, to be born. There's a whole lot about the Christian life here. Kind of a framework for us to examine our, our own lives and how our walk of faith is going. So how's your fruit bearing going these days? (laughs) Are we bearing fruit? Are we bearing fruit abundantly in our lives? Do we need a little pruning or do we need to have a couple branches lopped off (laughs) in our life? If you talk to folks who have grapevines, we read about that. Maybe we've done a little bit of that in our own lives in our gardens, in our backyards. Pruning's a necessary thing, isn't it? Because if we don't prune, what happens, especially with the grapevines? If we don't prune them, they go wild, don't they? <laughs> My wife says, wild and woolly. You know, just kind of out of control uh, completely. We got a lot of green... Leaves on them, branches everywhere. But where's the fruit? (laughs) I know that's what my grapevine looked like the first year, too, I had. I don't have any more (laughs) anymore. But it got better as it went along. But that first year, it was the first couple years. Where are the grapes? (laughs) Didn't know that much about pruning, really cutting back and removing those leaves because 
The thing about the grapevine, what it likes to be up to the sun, you know, in order for the fruit to be born. And we let those leaves kind of grow and out of control. It blocks the sun, doesn't it? Essential for grapevines to grow. Hey, that's a great idea. <laughs> Why didn't I think about that or read about that, huh? But that's true in our own lives. If uh, the sun, S-O-N, doesn't shine in to our own lives, our lives can get kind of out of control and branches everywhere and maybe green leaves and we think we're bearing fruit. <laughs> but if we look close in our lives, first of all, what kind of fruit is it? And where is it, really, for honest at times in our lives? So how's your fruit bearing going? Or maybe perhaps how's our allowing the vine dresser into our grapevine, huh? To prune us. Why does Jesus say, he says these words, In verse 3, already you are clean. The word for clean is, is interesting. It's catharia, which sounds like what? Catharsis. He says, if you are already clean, you are clean already. He's saying you are already kind of purged in your life. The word's already been working in your lives. And it's the same word that's used for pruning, catharia is English word what for catharsis in our life a cleansing that's take place and Jesus says you already clean already and what caused that he goes on to say because of what the word that he had spoken to them the word that Jesus had spoken to them that itself caused cleansing and some pruning in the disciples lives already And so what he's saying here is that that word is being spoken to the disciples. That word has already been proclaimed into our lives, whether we realize it maybe or not in our lives. And it has an effect on us. And how do we then stay pruned? How do we stay clean? By staying in the word, right? By being in the presence of the word. We are cleansed. We are pruned in our life. By gathering around the Word. And how does that happen, folks? How do we stay pruned? How do we stay cleansed? How do we stay kind of uh, up toward the sun? Is we come what? To worship. And we worship the Lord. We, we gather early, right from the beginning, where two or three are gathered in His name. There is fellowship in the presence of Jesus. That's how we stay pruned in the Lord. That's how we, we stay toward, toward the sun. At the confession, what do we do? We share those things in our life, those things that we've done, those things that we've left undone in our lives that keep us from what? Really growing in the Lord. That keeps um, the sun shining in to our lives. Through our confession, through, through the time of singing and, and psalm before the Lord, we're praising the Lord is another way that we... We experience his kind of cleansing, his pruning in our lives that keeps us abiding in him, into the vine, right? Into his, his source, his life, his Holy Spirit in our lives. So how's your, how's your fruit bearing going these days? Maybe a better question really is because can we ever cause ourselves to produce fruit? Not at all. So maybe, how's our abiding going these days? How's our staying close to Him these days? To rest in Him, to abide in Him. To, it says another word for that is, to remain in Him. And as we remain in Him, we will bear fruit. Not only fruit, we'll bear much fruit. And as Christians, I believe, again, the primary way we do that is something It seems very simple, something we do often every week, maybe a couple times a month, maybe more than once a week, but we come to worship, as I said, in fellowship, in confession. 
we hear the word of God. We may or may not want to hear certain words sometimes because maybe it's too close and maybe we're feeling like we're being pruned a little too close. How many know that sometimes you prune and maybe if you don't do it just right, it doesn't look as pretty, does it? No, it hurts a little bit more probably for that plant. But in our own lives, have you ever had times in your life where we've been challenged, we've been pruned pretty tight, and it can hurt at first in our lives, and maybe for a while. But God uses that, and then eventually we'll bear fruit in that place. Wow. How did that happen? It's a crazy thing. When you see trees pruned along the road sometimes, or maybe look over and say, man, they look really weird at first, don't they? Kind of stubby. You ever feel like that? You got stubby branches going out. <laughs> don't look so, maybe don't feel so, don't feel like you're on fire for the little but But God's done some major pruning, and you're at a very hard place now, but coming out of that place of pruning, and that place of maybe where you even had a couple branches lapped off, that God is going to use that and bring about a sense of, of new growth and new life and fruit that comes out of that. It's not only in our confession and in our singing of songs and hearing the word of God and, and prayerfully the message itself that challenges us to look at lives, maybe other people's lives, even differently at times. Because sometimes we look at them as, what's wrong with them? Why, what's, you know, we can do all kinds of judgmental things in our own brain. But God's really trying to say, hey, wake up and smell the coffee. Look at our own lives, huh? You may look initially like you just got all together. Branches going out everywhere and green. It's like, wow. Look underneath a little bit. People look a little closer. And maybe we're kind of reaching out to everybody else, not in a good way necessarily, but maybe even a judgmental way at times that doesn't help anybody. And we feel it's a way to be distracted from our own fruit or not or lack of fruit in our life. The fascinating thing is, again, who, who does the pruning? It's the vine dresser, which is what? The God... God the Father. Where do we get the source? Where does the branches and, and the leaves get the primary source? In the vine. Who, who's who? Jesus Christ, right? And we're called simply to, again, that word, it's minno in Greek, which means simply abide. What do you have to do to bear fruit? Abide in Jesus. Rest in him. Worship before him. Get his marching instructions for what you're to be about this week and in the days ahead. But rest and abide in him, and you will bear fruit. I'm going to go out and make myself bear fruit today. No. <laughs> Jesus says in Matthew, another text, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And then we'll know, we'll have a clearer picture but I don't know about you, sometimes when I'm just on, kind of get on a, a treadmill, um, not the kind that I really need to get on, but this, this treadmill in life at times. Um, this thing that kind of we, we spin out of control, we're doing this and we're doing that, and we've just kind of, it feels like maybe, yeah, I'm doing one good work and another good work, but the most important thing we do is we need to abide. We need to rest in Him. And we'll bear fruit, and, and much fruit. And go, wow, look at this. Fruit. What does fruit look like? What is fruit? What's a fruit talk? In the scripture, we hear from Paul, that like the fruits of the Spirit are what? Joy and peace and kindness, love, it's faithfulness. The fruits of the Spirit are these things. Can we make ourselves be joyful? Can we make myself, I'm, I'm going to make sure I'm going to be kind today. Try to be nicer to those who love the most that don't always treat as well as I should. 
If I try to determine I'm going to make myself do this, it doesn't work. But come before the Lord, Lord, teach me, help me, let me be to know how to do this. The joy and the kindness and humility and faith can come much more naturally, or I should say supernaturally, in the Lord. It's worship. As we come to worship, it's just this kind of ordinary, extraordinary thing we do week in and week out. And it is a discipline. It's a sense of, Lord, help me to take this time to, to worship you, to draw strength from you, to abide in you, to hear the songs of praise, to give you songs of praise and to, and to confess and to hear your word and message to come in the Holy Eucharist and the bread and the wine to receive your presence, a gift of forgiveness and love, and then receive that. And as that happens, that process happens, whether I feel like doing it or not, worship. That's where and how we bear fruit. And outside of worship, in outreach, we go to other places, the vineyard, and other places like the Lorian yesterday. You want to learn about fruit bearing and abiding and resting. We get around some older folks at times. As Allison shared and, and Gina, you know, we go to bless. And we go because, you know why we go? Only because of the grace of God. He's helped us to bear fruit. And we want to share that fruit with others, Lord. And we go to share that. And it's amazing what God does through that. But we're the ones especially who receive, don't we? And how many folks, so those folks have stories to tell. My first glance as we walk through sometimes assisted living or other places where older folks are, we just so easily when I was younger just kind of, ah. <laughs> we don't look at them closely at times and listen to them closely and to know that every one of them have a story. Most of them stories of the vineyard and how the Lord is in their life and lives in their lives. And simple every day, day in and day out, a living life in Christ. And we listen, and it's very humbling. You go, wow. We learn secrets of the vineyard in those places so many times. In other places, in the least of them that we bump into, Jesus says, what? You will see me. We go to share fruit, and in fact, that fruit from them is dropped right into our baskets. We say, thank you, Jesus. How's your fruit bearing going these days? I should probably rephrase that. How's your abiding going in the Lord? How's your rest in his word Praying with others around you. Sharing all those things that we have done or left undone that blocks the sun. <laughs> Keeps getting in the way. Lord, just once and for all, just cut this off. <laughs> cut it off in Jesus' name. <laughs> oh, Lord, yeah, there's fruit bearing going on, but prune me more, Lord, because I want to live more fully and holy for you all the days of my life. For your glory, for the sake of your vineyard, Lord. May the Lord bless us in this place. May this time be a time to come before you, Lord, and, and to seek your heart and your, your life, that you would come in and, and where there's some fruit, that you would prune us even more, Lord, through your word, through the music, through your the confession, through, through this holy sacrament, communion. Help us to give it all to you, Jesus. Those things that are completely blocking, cut those branches off. We pray, Lord.
and to march forward to bear much fruit, much fruit, to overflowing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.